So m my name's Thomas. I'm the director of mobile at the Wikimedia Foundation. I've been at the foundation for four years now. I started in August of 2008, and I've gotten to see the foundation grow from 10 people all the way up to 90 plus, and it's been a really crazy ride for me, and I'm really blessed to be able to have this opportunity to be able to be part of an amazing movement of which all of you have been the, the best of creators for, and to be able to really start, start to hit some of those projects that we as a community have wanted to work on for quite a while, but we just haven't had the right resources for yet. And certainly, mobile has been one of the big focuses that we as a community came together and said, you know what? There's so much growth that we're seeing within mobile. There's so much growth that we're seeing within the world that we need to be able to do more. We need to be able to dedicate more resources and have a focused and a, a long effort to really say, hey, let's, let's actually make a dent. Let's actually provide an experience that is one that we can all be happy with. So I'm going to break up this conversation into what we had to set out as the goals for the year, how we did with those, and really setting up where we're going to be going next. John Robson here is one of our software developers. He'll be joining in on the presentation later. And you'll hear from, from all of us as the presentations go on today. Thank you again for joining us. So 2011, it's been a very good year for us. It was our first year, as I mentioned, jumping into the mobile projects. And we had some pretty austacious, pr pretty, pretty big goals for ourselves. As you know, the board set forward a pretty big goal for the mobile project, saying, get us to two billion page views every single month. And when we took out mobile about a year ago, year and a half ago, we were barely starting to climb. We really saw that the developing world, the pervasiveness of mobile internet was growing. It was growing at a really, really astronomical rate. And the board said, you know, you need to be able to sustain this growth and you need to be able to push it even further. We saw that goal and thought, you know, that's challenging, but we think we can do it. And I'll get into the detail. Um, after we go over these points. Building the mobile team, big goal for us to be able to put everything together, stabilizing the platform, and then starting to think about how all these new users who are coming on to mobile phones for the first time, how can they contribute? So, our first goal, two billion page views. How did we do? Well, I'm proud to say that we met the goal. The goal was set to be finished in July, and we finished it even earlier. We hit two billion two months ago, and we're moving even faster now. The growth rate that, that we're seeing within the mobile projects is like nothing that we've seen in the, in the Wikimedia projects before. As you know, the amount of people that are coming to the site is bigger than ever, and the growth trajectory is very positive for people that are reading the site. But when we pull it apart and we look at the desktop and the mobile site, if the desktop is heading like this and up, mobile is just skyrocketing up. And it's been an amazing, amazing amount of new people that are finally getting access to the sum of all human knowledge, people that have not had access to this information before, people who are coming on to the, to the internet for the very first time. And they really represent a big portion of that growth. So I was really proud that the team was able to meet this very big goal from the board and that we were able to hit it not only by the end of the year, but to actually finish it early. Second big goal. Well, if we hit that two billion, that's great, but we want to sustain it. We want to be able to not only hit the mark this year, but we really want to be able to create a team that can continue this kind of growth, continue improving the experience, because while we're happy that we got two billion page views, that's still not good enough. We know we want to do more. And I, along with a number of others, have spent the last year really building out the mobile teams. I won't be diving into the various staff members here, but Take a look at some of the faces. Some of us are at Wikimania here. Um, you'll see UV up there. You'll see John. Sadly, not all of the mobile team could join us, but you'll find us online. You'll find us on IRC, on email lists, on Wiki. If you haven't talked to these people before, say hello. They're really building the next iteration of what Wikipedia will look like on mobile devices, and they need your help. So if these are names that you've never seen before, hopefully it'll prompt you to say hello when you see them at the conference or online if you happen to catch their names. So we hit the two billion, we built the team. One of the things that we really needed to do within our first year in order to sustain this kind of growth within our current team was to build a stable platform. For anybody who's been tracking the mobile projects for the last two years, you know that we'd had a mobile site before, a mobile gateway. It was built on Ruby, a very 
popular programming language. And it did great. It did great for its first year, two years. It scaled much better than most other Ruby applications that I've seen before. But it became a real big nightmare to manage. To be able to keep up with the development that was happening within the Ruby community didn't work well. It really wasn't something that our own development community was as well versed in hacking on. And in general, it just didn't fit well within our e ecosystem. So I'm happy to report that the gateway is no more. We no longer run a Ruby gateway. All the 2 billion page views that you've seen are now just a standard MediaWiki extension that you can install on your own, you can have a mobile site, and we're starting the next set of projects to, re be, to really be able to fold this in into MediaWiki proper. Because the goal that we have for the mobile projects is not for them to be something that sits on the side. We really want it to be something that is right within MediaWiki proper. So if you as a user say, hey, I have a lot of desktop users, but really there are so many mobile users that are coming on right now. Well, I just want to install it and be able to have it work. Well, we're moving forward on that as well. We're in the early stages, but that's our goal. The extension is being very actively worked on. Tons of check-ins, lots of developers, and it's been lined since 2011. So I'm really happy to say that we overhauled a major piece of the mobile infrastructure this year, and it helped us reach our goal, and we've been able to build on it really aggressively and come up with a product that we're very proud of. The last piece that we really wanted to get to, contributory features. Certainly one of the things that's very fundamental about the Wikimedia projects is the ability to participate. We know that's what created the site, we know that's what sustains the site, and we know that's what needs to continue. And we wanted to start tinkering with contributory features. And the very first one that we just started working on, and we've been really excited to work on the hackathon here at Wikimania, work with a lot of volunteers, is actually for a contest that some of you may know about. It's Wiki Loves Monuments. We've been working actively with that community to think, hey, you have a contest that is about photos, is about location, and is something that needs to be, a, that needs a tool that goes along with you. And we thought, well, that's funny because mobile devices are really well geared for all of these. They know where you are, they have cameras, and they work when you have them right in front of you. That's the, be the, the best time for you to have them. And we worked with Martin, with Elka, with various WLM volunteers, and we started to build a WLM Android application. Here are the first screenshots of it. It's in a really early state right now, and we're working on, on it aggressively. But you can see that we're really, really having this as our first big contributory pipeline. And it's photo uploads. Photo uploads are going to be the first thing that we really work on and say, this, this is something that, that's going to be uh, sustainable. And I'll touch on how we're going to connect this with Commons at the latter end of this presentation. So you can see that it offers a browse by campaign. You can see that it takes care of location. On the second screenshot there, you can see how it breaks up the monuments that are available to you, gives you different sorting options. It'll provide you detail. <coughs> It'll allow you to share photos. But really, screenshots are OK. But I think demos are better. So let me, let me pull up the running copy of the application. And since live demos are always fun, we'll see how it works. So I'm demoing it from the phone that, that I have right here, a Samsung S2. As you can see, I have the main screen right there. It gives me the option of browsing by campaign or using my, my current location if I'm not sure about which campaign I want to participate in. So I'm going to choose browse by, by campaign, and you see that I have a whole host of different country options. This is really just a small amount of the total countries that we'll have for the WLM contest. We're working really closely with the team to be able to offer up as many as possible. So I'm going to pick Austria here, and you'll see that it loads in all of the monument de detail. We have streets, we have photos, we have names. We have the kind of tool that you need to be able to have right next to you if you're a participant in WLM. Not only is this useful for somebody who's a long-time WLM participant because it simplifies your workflow, but it also makes it far easier for you to be a casual person, casual volunteer who's never worked with WLM but says, hey, I'd really like to contribute, but I didn't print out a list of monuments that I need to take photos of. I don't know where to start. Well, with this, it's all right in front of you. So I'm going to pick one monument in front of me here, and you'll see that we provide a detail page, we provide an address, 
and we give you the ability of, to get directions right there. And, at, and within just this, we already have an application that's useful for discovery. And that's, of course, one key piece of figuring out what needs to be contributed is knowing, hey, what's available? What do you need contributions from? And if we just had that, that'd be useful. But clearly, we've talked about this being a contributory feature, not just a discovery feature. So at the top right, you'll see that we have an image of a photo. So I'll tap on that. And you'll see that it gives me the ability to choose a photo from my gallery or take a photo. So I'm going to go to my take a photo. And I'll just take a photo of my laptop here. All right, photos taken there. I'm going to hit save. And you'll see that it's showing me the photo, showing me CC by SA license, and it has an upload option at the very bottom. I tap upload, prepares my photo, sending him out, and if all works well, it's made it online. Currently, we're sending these to TestWiki, so I'm just going to shift over to my browser here and see if it made it online. mouse. There we go. So pulling my browser in, you can see that we've now easily found a location, taken a photo, and send it right up to the wiki. If you think that this is really simple, good. That's exactly what we're going for. Mobile devices need to have very simple solutions to workflows. They can't have very many steps. It really needs to be you figure out that there's a problem, and you have one to two steps to do it. This is the beginning of our Commons contributory pipeline. We're going to learn a ton from the WLM community about what works when it comes to discovery, what works when it comes to photo, and even more importantly, what explodes horribly. We all know that mobile devices, mobile networks are extremely unreliable for millions of different things. Well, this contest in September will teach us a lot about what we need to optimize before we take this upload functionality onto Commons. All right. So if you like Wikilove's monuments, if you enjoy being able to take photos and you're really interested in helping us build this application, we're looking for feedback. You'll see these links all throughout the presentation. All of them are on wikimedia.org. You'll see that I have a little bit of red text on the right side. That, if you remember that everything's on wikimedia.org, just write down that very last section of WLM map. That's our project page for this. It'll be the best way to stay up to date with what is happening on development. If you want to be updated of all of our testing, subscribe to our Twitter handle there. We tweet out pretty regularly to say, hey, there's something new that we want to test. And for us, we really need to be able to get community support to test across as many devices. If all goes well, we should have this application available for Android right in time for the conference. Sorry, right in time for the contest. OK, so those four things were really important to us. I mean, being able to build the team, hitting the goal, building a stable platform, all, all of those were really an intrinsic things that we had to get done. But we're a very ambitious team. There's a lot that we want to get done, and we thought, you know, that's not good enough. We want to do more. And one of the things that we noticed is Wikipedia, in its current state, really needed a facelift. The reader experience was OK, but there were a lot of small things that a lot of other mobile websites did that we hadn't done yet. And we thought, well, why don't we take a couple of weeks doing simple improvements to make the experience a little bit more streamlined. And I'm just going to showcase two of the features that, that we added. So two screenshots here. On the left side, you see one of our regular article pages, but you'll see something new at the very bottom. You'll see that there's a little gray window that's popped up, and you'll see a little one there. If you browse Wikipedia, you know that references are especially important. And you know that when you click on a reference, you get taken to the very bottom of the page, and you see lots of references. For me. I get overwhelmed really quickly by the amount of references that are on a page. Well, on a mobile device, we get overwhelmed really, really quickly. So instead of showing you a long list of those references, we just pop up a little window, dismissible, gives you links, simple, elegant, clean. On the right side, you see how we've changed around search. Previously, you would type in a search term, and it would give you a search results page, which you'd have to then navigate through, find something else. It was multi-step. Instead of that, we show you searches right as they're happening. This is a common feature across most sites, and we were missing it on the mobile site. Let me show you what that looks like live. So I have the iOS simulator here, and it's sitting right, right on top of our English site. So I click on today's featured article, 
and you'll see that we have our normal mobile layout, info boxes, all the things that we're used to. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to pick up a reference somewhere. There we go. Oh, the, the sections are folded. What's that? The sections, they are folded. Correct. We do, we do fold our sections because mobile devices only have a certain amount. We want to be able to show as much content as possible within the first page load. So we collapse all of the sections so that you can navigate really, really quickly. And we also have some more ideas about how to make that even more efficient. So now, when you expand a section and you click on the reference, it just pops right in. It's really simple. You scroll, it goes away. You want to see another one? Boom. It pops right in. Really simple, really elegant. Thank you. That's what we're striving for. If I scroll all the way to the top and I click on search, you'll see that we do something strange right away. You see, you see that the page itself is gone there. You see that you don't see the article. And the reason why, why we did that is that we realized that when somebody is searching, they're really moving forward. They're moving away from the content that, that they're on. On a mobile device, we only have so much space. And we want to use it very efficiently. So all that we were doing previously was one search result or sometimes two, but we were using, weren't using screen real estate very well. Now, if I want to type in Washington, I can see my options right then and there. Okay, I can click on this, and I can just scroll through my options. If I want to see Washington State University, tap it, I see it right there. Simple, clean. These are the kind of changes that we really wanted to make so that the experience was a lot more polished. And we have a lot more ideas of what we want to get done, but these were simple, easy wins that the team said, you know, these are worth it. These are worth it to our users to be able to improve on. All right. So, talked a lot about Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is definitely our flagship product. In terms of the amount of people that read it, in terms of the amount of people that interact with it, it's huge. And clearly, the mobile initiative has been working aggressively to be able to make it as best of an experience as possible. But as anybody who's participated in the Wikimedia movement, you know that Wikipedia is only one of a number of other projects that we interact with. And we really wanted to be able to work on not just Wikipedia, but the other sibling projects. So I'm happy to say that now we have six more projects that have mobile interfaces. Wikinews, Wiktionary, Wikisource, Books, Quote, and Wikiversity all now have interfaces on mobile devices. It's important for us to not forget about our sibling projects. Even if they get less page views, even though they may not have as many contributions, we need to be able to support them. And we need to be able to grow those projects and be able to keep those communities involved with the latest developments that we're doing. So I was really happy that we were able to push them forward alongside what we were doing with Wikipedia. Later in the mobile track, we'll be hearing about Wiktionary specifically from Patrick here. So it's really important for all of our projects to get mobile enabled. You saw that there were seven projects now that are mobile enabled. If you know about the Wikimedia projects, you know that's not everybody there's still a lot more that need to get converted, and we need your help, not just to create main pages like that, but we really need you to tell us what the other projects should look like. We need your help to really understand what your workflows are and how a mobile device can make them easier. So, so far, you kind of get a picture of what we were, what we were asked to do, and I'm pretty happy with what we got done there. You've seen what we thought should be done, and I'm pretty happy about the strides that we've made there, but there's still a lot more to do. When you take a look at the desktop site versus the mobile site, it's a polished reading experience, but there's a lot of things that are missing. There's a lot of things that we want to improve on and bring in from the desktop experience. So I'm going to transition to John here, where he'll tell you about some of the new ideas that we have and how we've gone about them. Sure. So yeah, um, the current initiative we have in the mobile team at the moment is to redesign the navigation menu for Wikipedia Mobile. Um, it doesn't seem very exciting, but it's really, really important as it's going to lay the foundations for all the exciting stuff that's going to come. Um, so if you look at the desktop, it's rich with all these functionalities. It's got things like um, you know, selecting a random article, watch lists, editing, um, and there's lots of um, features that we could dream up for mobile that maybe don't make so much sense on a desktop. For instance, wouldn't it be cool if you could see all the articles that are near your current location? Um, and also, I don't know how many people have experienced this problem, but 
a lot of toilets, they don't have a very good mobile signal, and there's no Wi-Fi. So it wouldn't be great if you could take an article offline, so you, you know, have a little read on the toilet. <laughs> um, so yeah, we want these all on mobile, but the issue we have is where do we put these, all, these things? So on a desktop, you're looking typically at a resolution of over 800 pixels. On mobile, we've got about a third of that. You know, an iPhone, for instance, has 320 pixels width. Um, so yeah, where are we going to put all these things? It's a hard problem, but you know, once that's solved, fun it begins. <laughs> um, so the current situation is very, very, very crude. Um, so if you click on the W, oh sorry, you can't. See, I've got to move in. Uh, which way am I going? Sorry. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let me try that again. So in the current situation um, is that you click on the <coughs> Wikipedia logo and it shows you several functions that you might not have even seen. Um, so it allows you to change to a different language of the content you're, you're viewing. And um, there's also the random button which gives you a random article. Um, so yeah, this isn't brilliant. Um, we, we did a few user tests and what we found was um, a lot of people just didn't think to click the Wikipedia logo. They, they just thought it was branded and it, didn't, you know, it wasn't intuitive at all. Um, and we've also quite a few people feedback and raise bugs about, it'd be really good if I could change the content of Wikipedia. Um, it's like, yes you can, but it's hidden away under there. So, you know, it's, it's not working, it's not intuitive at all. Um, and it's also not scalable, so where, where are you going to put all these things? There's just not enough space in that menu. Oh, what's going on? Oh, what happened there? There we go. Um, so, a new navigation. So what we did was we looked at all the functionality that we wanted to bring in, and we thought, well, what's this content about? We, we managed to put them into two pots. So there was things that were related um, to the current content. So for instance, you might want to watch an article, you might want to save the current article. And there's also a lot of stuff that actually relates to the site in general. So, you know, you might want to go from reading content to finding articles near you or you might want to contact Wikipedia to tell them the date of birth is wrong and the current article you're viewing. Such a big problem. Um, so for the site-wide function, what we tried to do, um, well, first of all, I'm going to opt into our beta features, which I, I really encourage you to do. So if you want to put this link into your mobile phone, which is bit.ly forward slash WM opt-in, which is Wikipedia mobile opt-in, what you'll get is this lovely screen which allows you to join our experimental beta and get lots of cool features. So this is currently Wikipedia mobile of the future, potentially. Um, none of this is finalized. It's, it's all, as I said, experimentation. Um, but one of the things we've tried here is to put the site function um, in a way that mobile users are used to. So we've noticed a pattern emerge on the web where websites tend to put their site functions into the top left icon. Um, so on Facebook and Path, they do this, for instance. So we want to do this as well. Um, so we think it's really important to build on existing patterns because it makes it really obvious for users to know where to get content. So the other thing we did was we had some um, functions related to the page, and currently we've been playing around with the idea of table contents and language. Um, so I'm just going to find an article which has table contents that might be more interesting. I hope this one does. Um, so the first one is language. We wanted to make that really discoverable, and it'd be nice to show how many articles, um, how, many, how many languages an article is available in, just to really encourage people and almost kind of set the goal like, oh, there's only 14. I know one of, I know a language that isn't in this list. I want to contribute. Um, so we've done that, and we've also thought, well, it's quite useful to get an overview of what's in the page. So if someone might want to, you know, is looking for a certain piece of information. Where are they going to find that information? Um, but really, we're not convinced this is the right thing to do. Um, so we've been experimenting. So with th this, this action bar, um, as we call it. Uh, so it's bit.ly forward slash WM opt-in. Wikipedia mobile opt-in. I've got it on, on the next slide, so I can show in a minute. Um, so yeah, the, with, the, with the functions related to a page, this is a really tough problem because a lot of websites don't do this. A lot of websites, they just have a you know, a main navigation menu. Um, they don't have, they don't have like, the same thing we do on pages. Um, so we've been experimenting with lots of different ways of presenting this menu. Um, and we're not convinced which is the best one. 
So we've also been experimenting with things such as reverse scrolling. So if I scroll down where this closed, what actually happens is the menu disappears. Because we, we're kind of hoping that it's come to less relevant as you're viewing the content. Uh, and if you reverse the scrolling direction, it appears again. Whether that works, I don't know. But <coughs> it's something we're playing around with. Um, so it'd be really great if, we could, if you could help us get this right. Um, so first of all, as I said, please opt in. There's the URL there for those who didn't catch it before. Um, you know, if you use it to death, tell us what works, what doesn't work. Um, and, and there's lots of ways you can give feedback. Um, the feedback link here. Um, so you can come on ISC, you can send us emails, anything you can think of. It's all there. Um, and more importantly, as Thomas said earlier, you know, it's a very small amount of developers working on the mobile site. Um, but for me personally, it's, it's a really exciting project to work on. You've got none of the problems that you have in Mediocre Core. There's, you know, it's completely starting from scratch. Um, and it's got a lot of potential. Again, two billion pages on Wikipedia alone. Um, and there's a lot of exciting things that we could dream up there. Um, but we think the, you know, the, mo the mobile web isn't enough. So there's lots of things you can't do on the mobile web such, um, yet, such as accessing a camera. Um, so this is where our apps come in. Um, so you know, apps are a really good place to experiment. So if you look at the mobile app that UV is going to show you later, there's functionality such as the find articles near you, which is something that's really cool. And I'm really enjoying it on the app, and I, I really want it on the mobile site. Um, but the issue we run into there is obviously the mobile app has a very much smaller audience in comparison to the mobile site. So there's a few things we've got to get right before getting to that stage. So I think I'm going to move over to Thomas, who's going to talk more about our app story. Thank you. Thank you, John. So as John said, the mobile web's important. It's where the majority of our users are, but we know that there's a burgeoning app community and an app user community that needed a better solution than what they had. It was really interesting to take a look at the Android store about six months ago, because there were other Wikipedia applications that were already in the market. There was a whole host of them. But they're really poor user experiences. They weren't free, and they made you pay for things like saving pages, really basic features. And UV will, will dive into the depth of the Wikipa Wikipedia app a little bit later, but I just want to hit some of the highlights of what we've seen with Wikipedia and how well it's done. So if you haven't seen it before, these are two screenshots right from the Google Play Store. You can see that we have the mobile layout that you're used to, you see that we have new functionality that we've never had on the mobile site before. The Android app has given us a great testing bed to try out some new ideas. One of the features that we heard that users really wanted was the ability to save pages, as John mentioned. Well, we added that in there. Another feature that people were talking about is, my phone is with me wherever I go. Wikipedia is on my phone wherever I go. Why can't it tell me what's around me? Nearby, right then and there. There are a whole host of other features, but those are just some, some of the ones that I'm really happy that have worked out really well. And we've heard very positive things from users about how much better that experience is. And what we're hearing now is, I have this functionality in the app. When can I get it in the mobile web? We like people, we like experimentation like that, and we want to be able to create a synchronous experience across all of them. So how, how did we do? Well, since the app was launched, over four million downloads, great ratings, in our first week, we were the top trending app in the Google Play Store. As I mentioned, there were a lot of Wikipedia apps that were there. There are a lot of Wikipedia apps that came up when you search for Wikipedia. And they still do, but we're number one. <laughs> and while it's great to see the downloads, the usage is really important too. 45 million pages a month and growing. It's showing us that there's definitely users that prefer this experience, and we want to be able to give them an alternative to paid apps. Because if there's anything that's backwards, it's paying to access Wikipedia. We don't want that to happen. We want to create free access there. So as you've seen on all our slides, we want you to get involved. And within the app, it's even easier than most projects. Within the Google Play Store, you won't just find the Wikipedia app. You'll find the Wikipedia beta app. Now this is a pretty bleeding edge version of our code. We test it, but it might break on you. It might explode in interesting ways. 
but it's the best way to get involved and test real live applications. And we really want all of you guys to be able to download this app and give us feedback because that's what's gonna steer this project. Your involvement helps us make it better. Project page up there, mediawiki.org, apps. So those are some of the things that we dived into and all of those were pretty good. But it's not, it's not all fun and games if we just talk to you about the things that worked. Let's talk about the things that we were really didn't work. Honestly, things that we should have realized a lot earlier and the dumb mistakes that we made. <laughs> When we wrote the first version of the Wikipedia app, um, visually, it looked great. It looked really similar to our mobile site. And it functioned pretty well until we started making changes to the app and to the mobile website. And that's where things broke down pretty badly because we had made a pretty big fundamental mistake when we started it, and that's screen scraping. Screen scraping is bad. It makes you sad like that. You really don't want to screen scrape. As we were becoming more efficient with our development, our mobile site was going really quickly. Our app was moving really quickly. And they were stomping on each other left and right. It became a disaster. So one of the initiatives that we started was a mobile API. For anybody who's developed against MediaWiki, you know that MediaWiki has a great API that gives you access to lots of content. Well, mobile had a very basic one, but it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough for the first version of the app. But I'm happy to say that we now have a mobile-friendly version of that API that our newest version of the app does. And not only is it a lot more stable now, but it's actually a ton faster. We've received great, great re uh, feedback from our users saying, wow, not only did you say that this new update is gonna be faster, but it actually is. It's, it's that kind of feedback that makes it worthwhile for us to say, you know, I'm glad we were right. That one was good. Android was a, was a good thing. iOS? If you've been following our iOS development, it's been a little temperamental. We made a pretty significant change to the iOS app. As you might know, we previously had an iOS app. And it was an okay experience, but it crashed pretty aggressively. The infrastructure wasn't really good. So we decided to revamp it. And we thought, well, our new interface is awesome. We think that it's going to be a great experience. And we think that this is the kind of change that people can be okay with. Yeah, not really. <laughs> not really at all. <laughs> Change is scary. <laughs> and we had reviews coming in really quickly. There were a lot of problems that we ran into when we launched that out, from not testing on the lowest version of iOS to taking up more screen real estate. It was a really big eye-opener for us when the community started revolting pretty quickly. We, went, we moved as quickly as possible to be able to remedy those, and I'm happy to say that the newest version of our application is a lot more polished than what we launched. It's not where it needs to be, but it's in a far better place than when we started. So hopefully, we'll extinguish some of those pitchforks going forward. <laughs> Lastly, as we developed the mobile front-end extension, we realized that we were making it a little too WMF-centric. And we tried to really look back and think, how can we make this a generic enough piece of technology so that anybody can use it? And as I mentioned before, we have a project moving right now to move the mobile functionality into core. And we're hoping that by the end of the year, we'll be in a much better place for you to take that extension, install it on your wiki, and be able to have it available for your mobile users. So looking back, it's been a really good year. We've been busy. This slide shows you some of the things that we've been involved in. And it kind of surprised me that I ran out of space really quickly, or maybe it doesn't. The fact that we've been involved in so many things over the last year from hackathons all over the world, to building applications across all platforms. We're not a very big team, but we try to stay as focused as possible, figure out the simple solutions that work, work out best, and we really like what we do. And we're looking for more people to both come on as volunteers, but also join our team. So if you're a developer who likes working on this, well, we'd love to hear from you. Link to our project pages up there, and at this point, you've seen what we set out to do, what we thought was extra. Well, part of this presentation was going to be what's happening next. So, as you know, this is the circle of people participating in the Wikimedia projects. There's people who edit, there's quality review, it reaches people, we keep going over and over and over. And if you take a look at the mobile projects as they are right now, you know that they're fundamentally broken. There's no participation. There's no way to really get involved yet if you load up the mobile website. And as you've seen from 
the monthly report card, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. There are fewer and fewer people participating, yet we have more and more eyes coming on. And there's a lot of different reasons that this could be. But one of the things that's very fundamental is that this rise in mobile traffic is from brand new users who have no way to contribute. That's bad. It, contributions, as I mentioned earlier, are what built the site, they're what sustains the site, and, they're, and the, it's what will always power the site. If we have a group of users that can't contribute, and mobile is their only path, then that experience is broken. They become second class citizens, and that's not okay. They need to be included like everybody else. So, how are we gonna grow mobile editors? Well, as you've seen, WLM is a big focus for us. And of course, Commons, Commons, our media repository, is gonna be the biggest source of growth that the mobile team is looking at. In the report card, you can see that Commons growth has been really aggressive. It's our biggest growing project right now. People are adding photos, they're adding all sorts of media, and we really want to be able to add mobile contributions to this as well. So, we're gonna move on this pretty quickly. We're gonna be switching the Commons interface to be a mobile first experience, as you've seen with the other projects in Q1 of this uh, fiscal year. We're gonna be doing the WLM pilot that I mentioned to you guys, and then we're gonna be focusing on mobile commons aggressively and really trying to figure out where things should go. And of course, hopefully hitting profit after. <laughs> Next part, <coughs> editing. We had this question asked at the keynote. Editing is important. We talk about photos, photos are great, but everybody wants to edit. Everybody wants to edit on a mobile device. And you know, Jimmy was asked, are there plans for editing on mobile devices? And he wasn't sure about it. We may have to talk with him after about that. <laughs> but the answer is yes, there are initiatives for being able to edit on mobile. And I'm happy to say that the visual editor team that you've seen present this week are doing an amazing job building a beautiful, rich editor. It's been, I've been amazed at what they've been able to build. And what has made me even happier is the fact that they focus a lot on the desktop. That's, that's what I thought the product was, was the mobile editor purely on the desktop. I was super stoked when I loaded up in iOS and it just worked. You know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor in the back there. <laughs> so really I wanted to give a shout out to this team because they're building the foundation. Sure, we can polish this, we can create a much better mobile interface, we'll work with them. But the basic infrastructure that we need, they're developing. So the mobile team is especially thankful to be able to work alongside them, to have them already tackling some of the difficult problems that we know we would hit. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be a really amazing experience to be able to partner with that team later in the year and be able to get to things like simple block edits. Simple edits that will allow people to make spelling corrections. Really easy things that when you're on the go, you think, wow, why can't I fix it right then and there? Well, eventually, you will. But you can't edit yet. And uploading is cool, but can I do anything else? Photos are fun, but people have different ideas of how they wanna get involved. Well, we want to capture that too. We really want to be able to engage people in lots of different ways. And one of the really simple ways of doing that is microtasks. Microtasks, the idea behind them are very simple calls to action of, hey, why don't you get involved relative to the kind of experience that you're having on the site? And we've kind of put out a lot of questions to the community, and I'm curious to hear from you guys, both you know, at this presentation and talking with us after, about how you think about certain mobile-related actions. You know, if you're a user, you know, your phone is GPS, how do you think we should add it to an article? If you're looking at article quality, reading things is really easy. How should we do that on a mobile device? Reviewing uploads, whether on a phone or a tablet, there are lots of different things that we can take into account into this experience. And really at the end of the day, how can we motivate somebody who's never participated in the site, is coming onto the unit for the first time and has something to contribute? Because we owe it to them to build an experience that they can give back to. Because it's not just the fact that we want to do it, they want to do it as well, and we have to support them as a community. So, if you have ideas, come talk to us. So over the course of the presentation, you've seen the things that we put forward, the things that we did as extras, and what's happening next. Mobile is a really aggressive, really fast-changing industry, and it's tough to predict what's gonna happen within a year's time, heck, even six months' time. So, it's been a crazy ride for us so far, but we're really eager to hear from you. We really wanna know what you guys think of how we've been doing and what should we, we be doing next. So I'd love to just open up the questions right now. 
and hear back from you guys. And maybe we could have you, is that like that? <laughs> Hello. Oh yeah. So thank you very much. Sure. Uh, I think you're doing a great job. Number one. I come from Africa, uh -huh. specifically from Kenya. Uh -huh. uh, the mobile is such a great tool in Africa. More than 80% of web access is from mobile devices. Uh -huh. uh, Kenya is a great innovator. Uh -huh. We have the world's largest mobile money transfer. Uh -huh. Uh, which does more transfers than Western Union mm -hmm. every day. Uh, now, my question now, that was just a comment. My question is, um, on, on, the, on the Wikilove's monument app, mm -hmm. how do you filter the quality of pictures? How do you filter what devices are eligible? You know, like, I can come, I have a, an S3 with an 8 megapixel mm -hmm. camera. Somebody else has a 0 0.2 megapixel camera. Mm -hmm. How do you filter that, and how do you, you know, how do you make sure you have the good quality mm -hmm. pictures only? Mm -hmm. Great question. There, quality is something that's really important to comment. If, if you've ever seen the photos, the featured photos that show up on the site, they're amazing. They blow me away. The photo that won photo of the year out in space, just amazing there. And mobile devices have a huge range. And I think we really have to think about that as a community. I don't think one person is really going to be able to give you the answer of what quality is right. Um, certainly within the WLM context, it's a short pilot. It's us really experimenting on Android devices to two and up to see what works. Once we see the quality, we'll, we'll adjust as needed. Um, it's obviously very broad. And there's a community discussion to happen is, is a lower quality image in an article better than no image at all? Will that motivate somebody? Will that cause them to add something that that's never been before? Or will it push them away? And we don't know the answer to that. That's why we're trying to work really closely with the WLM community to really understand those use cases. And once we learn from that, we'll move on. But currently, it's, it's something that's up in the air. And I think that we as a community have to really think about what that answer is. Well, no one person can really answer that. Good problem. <laughs> Good problem. Hello. Hi. I'm Isla. I'm from Africa as well, but from South Africa. Um, and we're involved with the LM, um, WLM uh, competition in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our, the people who will be contributing to this, that we hope anyway, um, will never have been on Wikipedia before. Mm -hmm. So they weren't have registered. So is there a registration um, way of doing it on the app? So there'll be a link to the desktop site right within the application so that you can register for an account as well. It's not yet integrated with directly within the app, but as long as you have data connectivity, there'll be a link right at the very bottom that says create an account. Okay. So we'll be able to bring on those users. Not yet in as friendly of a mobile interface as we want, but they'll be able to add their accounts as well. Because we really want this to be something not just that works for current users, but also new users. Yeah, because we want to obviously encourage exactly. the community. But um, the other thing is that I'm sure everyone understands the contested space of South African um, monuments and heritage. And um, we want to be able to ask people to contribute and motivate for uh, sites that aren't specifically official currently. So um, is, there, is there an ability for that to, do, for that to happen? Why don't we ta take that conversation um, offline? Sure. Um, I'd love to connect you with some of the WM community members that are here, okay. because I'm sure that South Africa isn't the only place where that use case may show up. I'm sure yeah. there's lots of other places in the world where that may happen. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jacken from Italy. Um, when I navigate on Wikipedia on my desktop, uh, if I go to, okay, I, I usually edit Italian Wikipedia, but when I go to the English Wikipedia and then I search of something there, I'm searching on the English Wikipedia. While on the mobile version, if I set a uh, language that is English, and then I go to the main page of Italian Wikipedia and I search, I'm searching in English. Would it, wouldn't it be better than uh, if I am on a la certain language to search on that language with the, the you know? That sounds like a bug. Um, 
<laughs> Good luck. Um, yeah, I think another thing we'd be wanting to do is to allow um, be able to put country codes and colons to be able to search like, into Wiki. Um, so that's something we're thinking about. It's just a case of you know such a small team at the moment, which is like, come better for us. Come on. <laughs> oh, uh, I have a bit of question um, on the. Uh, I've tried the Wikipedia official app. And I found it to be, when, when I was trying different Wikipedia apps, I found it to be lacking. I haven't tried it recently. So I'm sure it's much better now than it was before. But I know one of the things, when I'm on Wikipedia, I want to be able to look at sections because I'm looking for a very specific information and I want to get it quickly. Where sometimes if you're just browsing, you want to, you want to read it normally. But more often than not, you know, I'm, I'm out with friends and we have a bet as to who's right. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, we, we can go and edit Wikipedia if we wanted to with sure. that. But I mean, obviously, we're, we're trying to get, you know, established information. And so one of the, one of the big features that I feel like is missing um, in Wiki, the Wikipedia app is the ability to scroll directly to uh, a section. And, I, and I, it, it basically makes me wonder, because the, the app that I use right now is called Wikipanion. There's a free version and there's a paid version. I think the paid version has the, you know, you can save pages and all this stuff, which I agree with you, should, you should not have to pay for. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, people need to make money and I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, we got bills to pay. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if you've, because you, you made the great uh, analogy that you know, there, are, there were apps that were doing this and were charging for this, and you guys took it upon yourselves to solve that problem. But I kind of wonder, what about features that other apps have? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, my philosophy as a developer is you know, never write anything that you can borrow and don't borrow anything that you can steal. <laughs> and, and so you know, taking these ideas, especially in an open, open source environment, seems like a really good step in terms of adding additional features. I don't know if you had a comment on that. I think it's about like finding like a piece of text on a page, is that correct? Uh, not only just finding te uh, text on a page, but also like if you're looking at an article on uh, psychology, for example, you know, you want to scroll down to... The chaps are about something. Yeah, yeah exactly. okay. Yeah, so, so a lot of this hinges on the nav. So one of the um, things that we're hoping to get out first is a table of contents, which um, will allow you to see an overview of that page and be able to see the section you're looking for. Um, we've also got an open enhancement for um, finding text on a page. But again, the issue is like, well, how, well, how to incorporate that feature. Like, is it worth like, its own button or you know, is it like an advanced, um, advanced thing? That, you know, for instance, we can imagine using the search box um, with a certain prefix that allows you to search the content. So it's really just a question of how do you do this rather than let's do this. Mm -hmm. Something we definitely want. Yeah, come talk to us. Let's grab a whiteboard and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, before we shift to the, the next question, um, to connect to your point about different apps being available, I actually really love the fact that there are lots of different apps. Certainly we want to be able to give a free alternative, but I like the competition that builds within the store to build the best experience possible. It pushes us, it pushes the developers, and the end user benefits a lot from it. So I really want to encourage app authors to get past the point of where their apps right now. When we took a look at the store, we saw things like save pages and screen scraping our sites. And we thought, you know, this is pretty simple. We'd like to see app developers do more than what they're doing right now. We want to provide a base experience. And we have a lot of ideas, but so today. Let's up the ante. Let's actually get to much more difficult features. Let's get them to think about contributions. Let's get them involved in the project so that it's not just a rebranding of the site. It's not just moving this here and this there. Let's, let, let's up the ante a little bit. And I think the app stores have provided us some really interesting use cases that we may have not thought of before. And I'm eager to see more. In the back. Um, my name is Kristen. I'm with WikiDC user Jim Base. Mm -hmm. I've been working a lot on the Native American Wikipedias. Mm -hmm. uh, so my need for these is a contributory tool, principally in audio, but video would be nice too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, a lot of these Native American languages are just way too hard to type. You'll sprain your fingers. <laughs> and a lot of the people who speak them are very old, so we only have maybe a year or two mm -hmm. that we can even record what they have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, the easy way to do it would be just to take your smartphone or take your iPad and go, I want to record someone talking about this article on Wikipedia. I want to record someone talking about their version of this word on Wiktionary and what it means. 
Your phone has English Wikipedia and English Wiktionary in it, so you've got it right there. So you click, yes, that's the article. And then you click, yes, this is the language I want to record. And you hold it up and you record it, and you click save. And you do this until you've got maybe 10,000 words, and then you go back into town where there's wireless and networks and civilization, and you upload the material, and bing, 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 you have instant links to your audio file in Wikipedia and Wiktionary. The bottleneck now on the spoken languages and on the Native American languages is that you sit there forever trying to link the files and you never get out in the field to actually document the raw material of the language and the clock is ticking. We right, don't get right. a second chance on these languages. Definitely, I think that's a really powerful feature. Let's talk after this presentation about how we could get volunteers involved to build an experience like that. All of the functionality that you're talking about, recording, posting, are what phones and tablets can do. It's just a matter of finding the right group to be able to build it. Yeah. It sounds like, like a slight variation of Wikipedia. Yeah, ones. exactly. So a lot of the work's probably already done. Yep. <laughs> Is it possible to get a hands-on uh, beta APK for the WLM application? As long as you're okay with bleeding edge. Yes, I am. <laughs> Done. I'm not. Yeah, come talk to us. <laughs> We'd love to get more testers. <laughs> I'm inter interested in what your thinking is on GPS submissions um, regarding accuracy and size and uh, source and how you determine what the right spot is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah they will range pretty drastically across devices. And this is why that pilot for WLM will teach us a lot. I'd like to see the data before speculating about anything. Because there's definitely a lot of studies that say that it's poor. Then there's a lot of newer studies that say modern phones are better. I'd like to s see the data behind it and figure out if it's a good piece of data to add to Wikipedia or if it's just going to be noise within the system. Hi. Uh there's uh, uh, one great success uh, of the mobile product that you didn't mention, unless I missed it, and that is uh, this app has been translated to probably more languages than any other app uh, by volunteers. And maybe some of those volunteers are sitting here. Uh, it has been translated completely to more than 50 languages, almost completely to more than 100 languages. Uh, at translatewiki.net. Some of you may be here. Is there anybody here who tried to translate the mobile app? Raise your hands. Yeah. Thank you. So for, for, for quite a lot of languages, that was the first mobile app ever that was translated into them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a great worldwide success in localization, too. That's a great point to make, Amir. Our work with TransitWiki has been amazing. They make our lives so much easier for localization and translation, and we're really blessed to be able to have such smart people and such passionate people that work with us to make all this happen. We actually had someone come over yesterday and ask, um, if there was a Swedish version of the app, and it was just great to be able to show him that it was already Swedish. <laughs> Hi, I'm Andy Mabbott, Pigs on the Wing on uh, both Wikipedia. Oh, thank you. Uh, and Twitter. Um, I'm involved with a project called QRpedia, which mm -hmm. some of you have probably heard me talk about three times already this week, so apologies for that. But we use QR codes to link to Wikipedia articles, detect the language of the device, mm -hmm. and serve the mobile article, mobile friendly article in that language where it's available. Mm -hmm. It would be great if we could have some sort of reverse path, because at the moment to create a QRpedia QR code, somebody has to go to a desktop machine, copy the URL of the article, paste it into the QRpedia website, and save the graphic. And it would be great, particularly in the mobile app, but even on the mobile website, mm -hmm. if somewhere there was an option that just said generate the QRpedia code for this article. Mm -hmm. So can we do that? Yeah, no, it sounds like a great feature. Let's talk about it after and see what it would take to do that. Great, thank you. I know that there may be more questions. Um, since I know there are other presenters who are you know, staring at me right now for how long I've gone, UV's eyes are bulging. I'm just going to head to the back of the room. If you have more questions for me, just go ahead and find me. I'll, I'll be around until uh, 3 o'clock when I do a second presentation about mobile devices. Um, quick plug for that one. We've talked a lot about modern phones here, and we've talked a lot about new and innovative features. That's only a small slice of the world. When we take a look at how people are accessing the internet, a lot of people can't pay for data. 
they don't have a modern phone, and they may not even have any data capability on their phone. It's even more important to be able to reach those, and we'll be talking about those at 3 o'clock here. So I'm going to finish up abruptly here. Go ahead and find me in the back. But I really want to thank you guys for coming here. I want to thank John for presenting alongside me, and for you guys for helping us. Use the microphone, please. Hello? Yeah. yeah. Can everyone understand me? Yeah. OK, good. Uh, so I'm Yui Panda. I am sort of part of the mobile team right now. And uh, I did most of the work on the Wikipedia apps, and I do a good amount of work on the Wikilaus Monuments app as well. So. This is going to be a bit more technical than what Thomas's talk was. In fact, he actually made me delete several slides while sitting there because he actually covered them and stole my thunder. But uh, <laughs> I'm the panda, and I'm going to rock on. So uh, yeah, so Android has been out in the market for six months. We have had 4 million downloads and 2 million page views a day as of June. And uh, the user reviews have been pretty good. We have never actually had like any problems. It's always been 4.4, 4.5 uh, all time. And people are like very happy with it on Android. Uh, on iOS, uh, we've been out for three months. We actually have way more page views from iOS than Android. Like We have like, like 50 percentage more. Uh, but people are not exactly happy about it. So uh, that three is probably a bit too high for uh, the reviews we get on the iTunes store. My favorite has been so far, I think, uh, something involving a dog. <laughs> yeah, so, but it's, it's actually getting better. Uh, we put up a, a new version of the app uh, like uh, three uh, weeks back, and uh, the dog comments have stopped, and people are like much more happier with it. So uh, I think eventually the dog comments will completely stop, and people will. Uh, uh, start clamoring for, oh, I, it should let me change the colors and stuff like that. Um, so that's, that's the deal with the stats. Yeah, so this is something that we kept seeing on like IRC email lists and even on people we were meeting is like, why do we need a mobile app? We already have a mobile website. So why do we need a mobile app? We have like our data is all open. Third parties can use it. And like, why don't we just let them do their thing and like have apps? Like, so it wasn't the mobile web enough, it wasn't third party apps enough. So this is something that like is pretty easily answered actually. So this is a screenshot from one of the apps. And it has an advertisement on top that does not involve Jimmy Wales or anyone who actually has anything to do with Wikipedia. And I do not like targeted ads because they are usually very shitly targeted. This is sort of implying if you're someone who actually has an app to read Wikipedia, you probably need a job. And I'm sure it gets worse uh, if you're reading a different article. So that is pretty bad and not something I quite like. Plus, it also has like lots of privacy concerns. Like you probably don't want, you probably are reading a few articles that you don't want advertisers to know that you're reading. Um, and third parties don't care about contributions, right? If you're if you're just gonna say, okay, we'll just leave third parties to do whatever they want. They want to make money off ads or or like just uh, make a Wikipedia app for the fun of it. But uh, I'm not sure if they actually do care about contributions, if they have it as a goal to actually increase editor retention contributions, but we do. We haven't actually done anything fully concretely into it yet. We are just trying to finish up the reading experience first. But as Thomas said, we are doing a lot of things for contributions. Um, and third is, uh, why do you need apps at all? We have like, lots of device integration. So that is the Android search bar. Uh, you can natively search on it, like you hit the search button and you type something, you get like this mixed with your contacts, your apps, uh, your web results, like it's, it's integrated properly into it. Uh, and then share to wherever you want. Uh, you, we don't actually, uh, I remember reading English wiki discussions about if you need to have Facebook buttons or not. Like it doesn't really matter here because if you have Facebook or Twitter on your phone, you can hit share and it'll show up and you don't have to log in, you don't have to do anything. It's integrated into your phone very well. And of course, offline functionality. Uh, this is another source of very good uh, review comments. There are people saying, thank you, I cannot have an internet connection in my exam hall, but now with saved pages, I can take it in and use this and pass my exams. Yeah. So like, I consider that like a pretty good win. Um, 
and then we have like open uh, the in the app from anywhere. So it's like if a random application elsewhere in Android uh, says, uh, oh, open this Wikipedia article for me. Uh, we can actually open that up in the app itself instead of having to make them go to the browser. So it's it's pretty integrated. Um, it's not so much into uh, integrated in iOS uh, because iOS doesn't offer us that many integration points. If you want to add like Twitter uh, sharing, we need to do it ourselves. Facebook, we need to do it ourselves. But uh, as iOS has been adding more native sharing elements, like uh, iOS 5 added Twitter, and iOS 6 is adding Facebook, we've been integrating to, uh, into them as uh, as soon as they're released so that you don't actually have to keep logging in every time. Right, and the third part is that we could actually experiment a lot with these. Mm -hmm. In the mobile web, if you actually push something out to production, it has to work on an iPhone, an Android device released yesterday, and one released like three years back, like Blackberries, because people apparently still use them, yeah. and uh, a lot of other phones that you have not even heard of. Like the, the user agents sometimes you get are very surprising. So every every time after a release, like John has to like spend like three weeks fixing bugs in obscure phones that we have to spend a lot of time tracking down these phones themselves. But the mobile app does not have the problem because we are like, oh okay, we're gonna run on Android with this this, this ver version and on iOS with this this version. So we can experiment a lot with the code base here and move much faster than the uh, mobile website can. So some of the things we've been doing is geolocation. Uh, that is, uh, you know, oh I'm here. Uh, I suck with direction, so like, yeah, okay. So that is, th there's a Wikipedia article for that. Oh, I'm in this university, but this doesn't have any. Maybe I should create one. Uh, and asynchronous loading, uh, I'll, I'll get to that later, but that is like, you know, the, the app loading time, the page loading time in the app is like 50 to 60 percentage faster than the mobile web. Um, uh, that is with async loading and delay loading images, and photo uploads is something we're experimenting with, uh, because that is one, something you can do only with the, with the app, right? Like, th there are no, uh, web tech yet that actually lets you access the camera or your photos in your file system uh, from the um, uh, from the web in a proper way yet. Um, and the W virus, uh, uh, I think that is classified. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah, but. <laughs> See, Android. Like, I I like I, li I really like Android, but like the only problem I have with that is in Java. I I like you know. But it actually gets better because then we actually need to cover iOS as well. So we're like now like doing it twice. Uh, so which is even worse. <laughs> so and there's also the problem of you are now locked into whatever they're doing, right? I mean, you are you can you're like okay, we'll follow your guidelines and do what you say, yes, sir. Um, and the open web is supposed to win, right? And you're not supposed to be. And, and the other problem is what happened with the Ruby gateway is that we didn't have enough people who are very good at Ruby and very interested in, in actually maintaining it for us, which is the same problem that happened with the old iOS app, which was, it was done, yes, it was released on the market, uh, it was released on the app store, yes, it was good, but there was nobody actually ar actively working on it. It was just like there and done, right? And uh, the, the rest of like the community is a lot of like PHP programmers, JavaScript gurus, and and like CSS people, but I'm not sure, like even if you have Java people, they probably have much more important things to work on, like the search interface, uh, than on like the apps. So that is actually a problem um, of finding enough people interested to maintain like things in niche languages that are not part of the general thing. So we actually have a solution to this, which is the underlying platform is the same thing we use on the web. Um, it's full on HTML, CSS, jQuery and Apache Cordova. So Cordova is like a, is a wrapper. So you essentially have a single page web app which is wrapped into an app for iOS or Android. And it also has JavaScript APIs that let you access um, whatever device specific functionality that is not there from WebKit. For example, the photo interface or file system access or the compass or like lots of things. Um, and you can always dive into Java or Objective C if you want. So in the browser, there are like a lot of bugs, and you can't actually do anything about them. You're like, oh damn, I can't do anything until this this WebKit is upgraded like two years from now. But but in PhoneGap, you can always dive into Java or Objective C and write a plugin and like say, okay, this doesn't. I can't do this in JavaScript, but I can do this in in Java, and I can do that. The the prime example for that is in Android, you cannot actually detect the user. 
the user language from the client side, from JavaScript, it always reported as English. Uh, but we were able to, uh, we didn't actually even have to write the plugin. Uh, IBM had already written a plugin that tells us the actual user language being used so we could properly localize it instead of saying, oh, you don't know English? Sorry, suck it. So it is, it is, it's, it's a pretty good platform to work things out on. Uh, so what's awesome about it? Quite a lot of things, actually. So it's, it's, it's like 99% HTML, CSS. A lot of our volunteers already know it. Uh, very easy for people to pick up. Like whenever we go to hackathons, we had in Mumbai, San Francisco, uh, and, uh, and uh, Pune. Uh, so the deal was like if we wanted to have them start on MediaWiki extensions, they first have to figure out, OK, so even if they know PHP, that will OK, so this is all the MediaWiki plumbing that I'm now learning. So by the time they do that, it's like already end of day one. But this is just like standard JavaScript and CSS that they're using everywhere. There is nothing pretty special about it. So it's like a couple of hours, like, oh, yeah, I'm good. So we have actually had like a lot of contributions uh, from people uh, who are like drive-by volunteers. I think TPD, I'm not sure if he's here, but he just, hey. So uh, just came up and like, oh, quick search bar. Like, yeah, here's a pull request. So we have Android quick search bar, and we didn't even know how to work for it. And uh, there was some RIM employee who just came by and said, oh, let me port this to the BlackBerry. And they just. Like done, so we have, we have like a lot of contributions uh, like that happening because it's so simple to pick up, and uh, probably also because it's on GitHub. Um, so yeah, the last one is uh, okay. Mm. Is that I can eat get eaten alive by red ants and it's okay because it's not like oh I'm the only guy who knows Objective C and Java together and can maintain the app and if I'm dead then it will not be maintained. It's just gonna rot. Uh, so that's like not going to happen because like I think pretty much every developer here probably knows JavaScript. Uh, see the see the other thing we did with this was to develop the mobile view APIs. Uh, so as as Thomas mentioned, the app was doing screen scraping before, which is so completely evil on so many levels that if I start, I probably overshoot more than Thomas did. Um, so. We, we, the, it was fun because uh, we were developing the API and the app side by side. So we were like, at some point, the app was missing. OK, I needed this feature in the API to do this, but it is not there. But it was pretty easy to get that done because the API and the app were being developed together. So we found, we found out that the API was missing in some places, but we were able to fix it immediately because we just found it like, right there instead of like, uh, oh, we found this like eight months from now. So uh, that is pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to show you a demo of that. Uh, how many people here have known of the API sandbox? That is probably far too less. Uh, so here you go. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've, I've, I've like had to cut off like the second half of my slide deck, so it's fine. So, okay, it doesn't scroll. But anyway, <laughs> so I can get section-wise information here. I can say all sections. And it'll give me the text of all these sections. Yeah. And again, and, uh, and later on, I can say I just want section one, section two, section three, and it'll give me just that. Uh, so it's a, uh, uh, OK, I think I didn't specify. I did specify text. So there's a text, but it's all right on. Uh, so the two things first is API sandbox is awesome. And you should uh, use to explore the API instead of the auto generated text, which is like a large blob of unparsable things. Um, and uh, second thing is we have like, individual sections that we can get. So this enables us to do a lot of things, which I'm going to show you shortly. Hmm. Ah. Maximize. Okay. Yeah, the third thing is we were using OpenStreetMaps like properly here with Leaflet instead of uh, the other library that starts with O that I'm not going to mention. Um, so uh, it's, it's a very newish JavaScript library that does not have an API that looks like Java. And uh, we are using uh, OpenStreetMaps for displaying like locations and like nearby views. I have screenshots later. Um, so it's all full on JavaScript. It works on the web. It works everywhere. We were using Google before that. And th we have a lot of code sharing between the mobile app and the mobile site. Uh, Thomas demoed like the reference reveal, where you tap it and you have like a small pop-up coming down from down uh, and showing you the, the reference that you are seeing. Uh, so we just th that is the same code on both the app and on the on the mobile app, I mean the mobile site. Uh, same thing with all the style fixes that we were doing, like inline styles, 
and things, and the section expansion that you know you tap and it slides out, and the new mobile navigation that uh, that John showed you screenshots of, and that is on the mobile beta, will when it's when it goes to production or probably even much before that, uh, we'll, we'll we'll be able to reuse most of, even not all of that code in for the app, so that the app gets it faster than the mobile thing, and it also goes back. Like for example, the location and map based things, uh, we just refactored it in the app so that they can be used directly in the mobile site as well, because we have used them in the app and we know what the pitfalls are and we know how to do it properly. And uh, dynamic sections, which I think I've been mentioning so uh, for too long without actually just telling you what it is. Um, I'll probably do that soon. Ah, and this is the probably the most fun part with writing class platform applications. You're supposed to write it once and run it everywhere, but as Thomas mentioned, uh, what works really well on an, I, uh, on, an I, uh, on an iOS 5 iPod will probably not work at all on iOS 4.3 or on 5.1 or on 4.3.1 or whatever. So, but the majority of the code is, is pretty good. Uh, you, just, you just write it and it sort of mostly works. You don't have to worry about it. And because it's just simply JavaScript and CSS, you can use the Chrome debugger or Safari debugger or Firebug to actually debug the entire thing, set up breakpoints, which is actually very nice because uh, debugging web websites on the mobile is pretty hard until about very recently when that actually happened. Um, what sucks? Uh, quite a lot of things as well. It's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so there are obviously going to be a lot of CSS bugs, a lot of uh, lot of scrolling box and the lack of proper debugging tools. There are some things that work fine on Chrome, but actually completely mess up on the device, and you have absolutely no way of debugging them. You just keep dropping printf statements everywhere to see where it stops. iPhone doesn't even tell you where like your execution stops. It just stops and just stops. So you have to keep putting printf saying, oh, one, two, three, four, five, and then like, oh, okay, I have four, I don't have five, so it must have stopped at four. So it's, it's pretty hard. And they have scrolling bugs. We found out like very interesting bugs. Like for example, scrolling breaks if you have a selector with a star in it, or if you have a selector that has any attributes in it, but only on a certain phone. So these are all some very interesting, interesting scrolling bugs that uh, come up. But that's like part of all your HTML thing that goes on. You, the, the sad part is that you often don't have any control over the bugs. So you have to either find workarounds that still don't make any sense, uh, or you have to say, okay, I'm going to just like disable it for this phone. Uh, but it's a, it's a pain in the ass. And it is slow on iOS. It is at least 75% slower than Safari because uh, on uh, apps using WebKit uh, on iOS, it doesn't let you use the JIT, which means we are going to be very slow, right? So I mean, uh, I don't think that Apple is actually going to change it anymore. Especially since like they have Chrome on it now, and they are using the same slow engine, and I don't see that happening. So that is like pretty much going to be the same, which also leads to the second point that uh, we can't assume that uh, the hardware is actually going to be uh, these, the code is not going to run as fast as the hardware of the 4S or something is going to let. So that is actually a pretty sad thing. But uh, we had actually a lot of fun experiments that we were doing uh, with the app. Uh, like uh, the beta apps. So we actually put out betas pretty frequently, like once every other week. Uh, and uh, the Android one is on market. I have URLs at the end. Uh, and the iOS one, it, Apple doesn't let us do the beta testing thing publicly. They just say, oh, you have only 100 people you can trust and test, uh, which is sad. But uh, we have a mobile list. And if you want to test, you can send us. We have instructions on the list on how you can actually send us your key. And we can let you, let you test it on the app. Um, so this is the, the actually the, the biggest experiment, I mean, the, the most productive experiment you're done in the app that we want to move to the site soon, which is delay loading content, right? I mean, when you actually first load the site, um, uh, I mean, like load a page, what we do on the app now is that we just load the lead section first and the name of the, uh, all the uh, name of all the sections, and then we display them, and then we do a second request for the rest of the content. So what this actually means is that we have at least a 50% speed up because the first data connection is much smaller than if you were requesting the everything. Right, and uh, it's also uh, going to be even faster on like slower connections because uh, two requests that are smaller is going to be faster than one request that's very large. Um, and we don't uh, load the images until you actually expand the section. So like a lot of use cases we saw was, oh, I'm just going to search for this and I'm going to read the info box and I'm like, I'm done. Right? If you're loading all the images in it for that's like not really a good idea. So we have we have like had some really wild. This is like I tested it, like very unscientifically with a phone in India for about like 20 times and averaged it. And the, the old version of the new version is like there is um, a 3x difference. 
because the connection is much lower. And on Wi-Fi, it is much less of a difference. But the slower the, the, the connection gets, the more uh, the faster the speed up is going to be. So this is deployed live on the Wikipedia beta app, which you should download and, and uh, leave doc comments on in the reviews. I uh, have the URL in the later. And we have location-based features. So the first is the nearby thing. This is here. So uh, I'm here, so there is the school without walls. And I can click that and find out what it is. And then these are coordinate links which if you actually tap them on the desktop site, you get something that is completely unusable for every, everyone except editors. But if you tap it on the app, you actually get the map view with the marker placed exactly where that is. So you don't, I mean, like 38 degree 53 doesn't mean anything to me. But if you actually see it on a map, it probably makes a lot more sense. Uh, and we are currently using an external service called GeoNames to put this up. Uh, so we tell it, OK, I want all the Wikipedia articles near this thing. So what they actually do is they take our dumps process them and find out all the different coordinates, uh, which is kind of stupid, because we are like doing a round trip. And we are actually, I think, even paying them a little for that. So we have developed an extension called extension GeoData from the mobile team, uh, which, is, which provides API for all the GeoData from the articles. So you don't actually have to go to an external service. And it's obviously going to be much more faster updated than uh, the external service was, which is supposed to be deployed anytime soon, because it's a very large table. Um, photo uploads, uh, this is the part that I completely cut out, because Thomas finished it off. And we even did a demo. So uh, we kill those monuments. It's very focused. We have like a month and a half for it to do so we can measure it and we can know what worked and what didn't work without having to deal with the full thing of commons forefingering. And it's built on the same platform as Wikipedia app and built to be very extensible. So there are wiki takes Manhattan, wiki takes Mumbai, whatever, can be easily made into an app for itself. Um, a generic commons uploader and like ponies, whatever. So it's, 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 uh, we are using a good proportion of the Wikipedia app for this as well, the localization, the API calls. So we are trying to like, reuse most of the code as possible so that like, if one fix here is going to translate to another one there. Uh, yeah, so we want people to contribute. There, like, there was a volunteer who, uh, who came up and said, oh, you, don't, you don't have a place to put a random article, so maybe you could just like, shake the phone to get a random article. Right? Like, that's a very nice way to get RSI as well. But yeah. it's, it's, a it's a fun feature. Right, so like like we we could like just come and write code and like we accept it like right? because it's fun. Um, so crazy experimental ideas like are welcome. And the good deal is like if you contribute it and if we are not able to make it into the actual app itself, it still doesn't matter because on Android you can just take it, build it, and publish it yourself. It's the f it's just forking to the ultimate, right? You mean like, it's like it's, you don't have to like set up a large cluster and ask for donations. Um, and so the contributors list is on the app, and 22 of the 33 of them are volunteers. And, um, and, and, and a lot of them are, are doing it for, were doing it for the first time, and they did not have problems with it. Now their name is being shipped to the app that is like 4 million downloads, which is like a very good thing. So your name could be there. Uh, so you could come to GitHub. The apps are all on GitHub. Uh, because they've always been on GitHub and they're not still now on GitHub. So github.com slash Wikimedia has both the Wikilaws Monuments app and the Wiki uh, official app. Uh, you could come give us a pull request. Uh, we have, like, we have, we'll, we'll definitely review it and like, merge it in. Um, and these are all bit.ly URLs for the mobile list, which has all the announcements for the betas. Um, so that's like, you know, you can just go to Google and do mobile-l and we'll get it. That is how I got that. And the feedback list is something that we very, very closely monitor. And you'd probably like it's like it's more like emailing Amazon. You'll probably get that back in like two minutes, right? So uh, if you have any feedback whatsoever, like uh, we, we get a lot of fun things that John probably missed out on telling. Like, like, like I want to change my password. But uh, so if you want to send anything proper feedback, like feel free to. And we are always on IRC from different time zones, so you're going to find us uh, any of us, uh, some of us over there anyway. And uh, these are all the, the links for where you can actually get the apps. I highly recommend you get the Android app beta, because that is going to be updated very fast, like, like once every other week with crazy new features. And that is the one that is actually very fast compared to that. That's in three seconds to load the Russia page versus nine seconds. So you should get that. And that is all. Questions?
Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Patrick Hayes. I'm a volunteer with the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, I'm a student from the University of Waterloo, and I was contributing um, on Wiktionary Mobile. So what Wiktionary Mobile was, was we wanted to have, um, like the official app for Wikipedia, we wanted to have one for Wiktionary as well. This is gonna be the first extension uh, of an official app to one of the sister projects. So we wanted to do this in an extensible way so that as other sister projects, if they need apps, um, we'll have already gone through all the hurdles and we know exactly what changes need to be made. So how it worked was uh, with the Undergraduate Capstone Open Source Projects Program, or UCOSP. So what this program is, is that in Canada, uh, different universities across the country will contribute undergraduate students to work on open source projects. So this year, the Wikimedia Foundation got involved with this, and four students um, were working with the Wikimedia Foundation on some sort of project for course credit. So we had four students, two from the University of Waterloo, one from the University of British Columbia, and one from the University of Toronto. And what we were doing is we were working on, um, we got, um, when we started the project, we didn't know what we wanted to work on, but there were a lot of options available to us. It was great. There were lots of ways we could make an impact. And we decided that Wikimedia Mobile looked like something really exciting for us. And that's when we heard that Wiktionary Mobile was something that was um, a project on the table. So that's something that we decided to get involved with. So we spent about four months working on it. And then uh, just in June, we got the app out on the Android market. Uh, UV already talked about the, um, the architecture. It's built with Apache Cordova, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript. It's essentially the same code base as Wikipedia. So as new features get added to Wikipedia Mobile, those same features will be showing up in Wiktionary as well. Uh, there's a few features just that are uh, more Wiktionary specific. So on uh, a lot of Wikipedia uh, Wiktionary articles, there are audio files of the pronunciations of words. So now you can pull that up on your phone. Um, listen to very, like native speakers of different languages say the word. Um, it was the word of the day. When you pull up your phone, it'll tell you what the word of the day is. Just a fun way to learn um, learn new words. And then, like we talked about before, uh, so there's actually you know a big translation effort um, associated with Wikipedia Mobile and Wiki Wiktionary Mobile. Um, the app has been. So all 250 plus Wiktionary languages are available uh, in the app, but also the app itself has been translated into various languages using Translate Wiki. So no matter which um, language you speak, hopefully the app should be available to you. It's very easy to volunteer. Like Yuvi said, you can, the code's on GitHub, you can join an IRC um, and work on, um, and contribute that way. And the app is available now. So it's in, the, uh, it's in the Play Store for Android. The iOS version uh, is not out yet, but if you want, you can get it from this link, or um, there's a QR code, take you straight to the Play Store, and download it that way. That's the, the lightning talk for this. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I probably skipped a lot of things. All right. Thanks, everyone.